I recently read a study that as ice cream sales increase, so do the number of shark attacks. Does that mean that ice cream is causing people to get bit by sharks? Should we have a national ban on ice cream? Or could there be another explanation lurking beneath the surface? Whenever I see that two things are closely related, my brain jumps to the conclusion that one of those things is likely the cause of the other. This is because my brain naturally looks for patterns and connections in the world. I can't leave anything to chance or randomness, there must be a reason or explanation for everything. Take for example our scenario. Ever since I started wearing a crystal necklace, I haven't had any trouble sleeping. And on the surface, our brain thinks, this must be a very spiritual, a very powerful necklace because it helped me sleep, right? Cause and effect, A cause B. But in reality, we have not had a control group, we've not done experimentation, we cannot say that one caused the other. We can either A say that they are related, or most likely they are just coincidental, right? There's just kind of randomness of why you're sleeping, probably has nothing to do with the necklace. So in this video, we're gonna tackle that big phrase in psychology, ready? Correlation does not imply causation. Just because two things are related does not mean one caused the other. We're going to dive into four key explanations of why we cannot establish causality from a correlation. All right, let's start with the first one, a post hoc fallacy. This is a fancy way of saying A occurred, then B occurred, therefore A caused B. This is on the basis of timing, right? If we see an event in the world, we think whatever happened just right before it must have been the cause. The best example, of course, is in sports. Imagine, for example, that your favorite baseball team or basketball or football team is playing a game, right? And you get a new pair of socks. And you put on the socks and your, t your team happens to win, right? Even though the socks have most likely nothing to do with the win, our brain thinks there's some sort of causation, right? My socks cause my team to win because I put on my socks right before the event. And this explains sports superstitions, why people eat the same thing before every game, why they wear the same thing before every game. They think there's some causal event. Another example might be what you eat for lunch. Maybe we had some sushi. And a couple hours later, you got sick, right? You don't feel good. Now, yes, of course, sushi could have caused you to be sick, but you could have also been getting sick even if you did not eat sushi, right? It's just timing, and therefore we think that it is the cause. Now, even though these are kind of fun examples, this can actually have real-world ramifications. One of the most famous examples is the idea that autism is linked to vaccines, right? If I take a vaccine, this is going to lead to autism. And the reason this falls under post hoc fallacy is because they typically happen around the same time, that kids typically get diagnosed with autism around the same time as vaccines. But we know today there is no connection. This is a misconception, a myth that is generally widespread. So correlation does not apply, causation. All right, another reason might be the directionality problem. Yes, two things can be related, but in which direction? Let's take a look. We know that poor sleep is related to stress, right? For all of you who have not gotten good sleep, you know the next day can be very stressful, right? So I can say A cause B, right? And there we go, I establish causation. Here's the problem. Couldn't I also say that if you're stressed, that is what caused you to have bad sleep? I think I could. And that's the idea. If I don't know which direction the variables are heading, I cannot establish causality. Take a look at exercise. Exercising is gonna make me happy, right? It's gonna boost my dopamine and serotonin levels. But can I also argue that happiness, if I'm more happy, I'm more likely to what? I'm more likely to exercise. And so if we don't know the direction, we can only say they are related, a link associated, there's some sort of correlation. All right, another reason we cannot say correlation implies causation is because there might be a third variable, also known as the third variable problem. Or we could say confounding or lurking variable or something unforeseen that connects two things together. I said at the beginning that there is a relationship, and there is, between ice cream sales increasing and shark attacks or drowning, right? This is a positive correlation. And we're like, oh my God, I should stop eating ice cream. But there's always a third variable, maybe, that is below the surface that connects two things together. And instead of A and B, we'll label this as letter C. Do we know why these two things are related? It's because of summer heat waves, right? Let's think about this. We know that in the summer, people eat more ice cream, right? And we know more people are swimming, so there's more shark attacks and drowning. And so while it seems like this relationship is there, and I'll put a little uh, mark here, there is no relationship. It's a spurious relationship. It is a coincidence or random. It's really a third variable that connects them.
One of my favorite third variable examples, because I have my own family, is the idea that if you eat meals as a family, that's correlated to students doing well in school. And this is true. We know there's a correlation there. But it's the idea that if I just go and eat dinner with my family and we have spaghetti, all of a sudden my kid's going to do well, right? But that's not necessarily the case. Instead, there is a third variable, right? It's not about chicken at the table, um, that might connect these things together. Can we think about what that is? Is general parenting style, right? In other words, if you are somebody who believes that we should eat dinner together at the table, you're probably also better at communicating, right, with your family members. You're probably more likely to talk about schoolwork. You're more likely to advocate and talk about the importance of schoolwork. And of course, communication is better. So yes, grades and dinner are good, but it's really the style of parenting that is going to connect these together. And while these seem related, we're going to say there's a third variable. All right, our last reason why we cannot establish causation from two things related is because we call confirmation bias. My pre-existing beliefs about something might think there's a causation, but really two things are just related. Imagine, for instance, you are a doctor or a nurse, and it's a Friday night, and the hospital is just filled with patients, and there's chaos everywhere. And you look up at the sky, and you see the, the moon. It's a full moon. You say, of course it's a full moon, essentially implying that the reason there's chaos at the hospital is because of the mysteriousness of a full moon, right? That there's somehow a connection there. But all that's really happening is that because you have a pre-existing idea that weird things happen at full moon, that must be the cause of uh, a hospital being chaotic. But here's what the doctor should do. Whenever the hospital is full, right, with just tons of chaos and tons of people, um, is look up at the moon and see when it's not a full moon. And what doctors will realize is that it's probably equally as full and chaotic when it's a half moon, right? So this is the idea of confirmation bias. We only look for things to confirm our beliefs. And why this is important is we start to establish patterns between things when there is none. In psychology, you know what they call this? We call this the illusory, illusory what? Illusory correlation. When we see a relationship between two things when there is none. Full moons and chaos, vaccines and autism, sugar and hyperactivity, superstitious beliefs like blue socks and winning, there really is nothing there. All right, so let's do a nice recap of why correlation does not apply causation. It could be timing issues, post hoc fallacy. It could be we don't know the relationship or direction of those two variables, directionality problem. It could be a lurking, right, an unforeseen variable that we're not aware of. Or it could be our beliefs playing tricks on us, right? These could be the reasons we cannot establish causality. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned about correlations and causations. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and at your own risk, eat some more ice cream.